if you want to know more about your rights as an employee. Hands up if you want to be better at your work as an HR exec. Okay, good. I have been a HR manager for more than 10 years. And uh, good morning, thank you, and welcome to today's class. Uh, we will be talking about Employment Act, retrenchment, and sexual harassment at the workplace. Okay. My name is Elvin. <coughs> Sorry. My name is Alvin. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, I, I have been an HR manager for more than 10 years. But all in all, I have worked uh, more than 20 years in various industries. My first job was with PDI Hadini, doing sales on the floor, operations. I did sales with pharmaceutical companies like um, GSK, you know, like Soul Smith Klein, your Colgate, hey, no, not Colgate, uh, Morning Kiss, Panadol, I was there. I was with B Brown, a medical supply, and then I transitioned into the uh, fitness industry for about 15 years. It was then from operation, I transitioned into HR, and then I've done logistic, I've done digital marketing, and I've just done, now I'm here, lying to it. My degree is in Human Resource Management and Government University of Sydney, and in case you didn't know, I'm also a part-time theatre practitioner. So I perform on stage, not on TV, but on stage. I write musicals, short musicals, and direct with my wife's collaboration. Okay. Now, what is this? Ice. Ice. Nampak kelas kan? Yes. So we need to break the ice. Okay. So number yourself, one to four. One. one. Find your partner. So you may have to move your chairs, go and sit next to your partner. Now, go find your partner. Find your partner. One, two, three, four. One, who is one? Who is one? Hands up. Yeah, one. One to one, two to two. Move, 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 move. You will have to sit there for the next four hours. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow, you two very shy. Huh? Huh? Very shy, so you cry. Okay. Go and sit next to your partner. Okay, so what you're going to do is, you're going to introduce yourself to your partner. Okay, your name. Uh, yeah. Share some information like where you're from. For example, uh, Priscilla just now we talked. She is from Sarawak. So share a bit of yourself. Maybe talk about uh, what movie you have watched. What, what was the last movie you watched? Was it Mission Impossible, The Flash, or whatever other movie? Share a bit, okay? Once you share already, what you're going to do is, one by one, you're going to introduce your friend. So basically, once I, for example, let's say I, I share with Priscilla already, right? Um, I'm from Penang, um, I'm, I just watched The Flash. Then later, Priscilla will introduce her. This is Elvin. Elvin is from Penang. Elvin just watched the movie The Flash, things like that, okay? So, I give you five minutes. Share. Can be anything. Can be anything you want share. Your, your work, where you're from, uh, how long you've been working here, why you are here today, why you don't like, why you don't like Alvin. It doesn't matter. Okay? Just share. Okay, just share. Five minutes.
like a uh, one month class. Mm -hmm. So uh, he from actually Hong Kong from Taipei. Oh. Taipei. Oh. Yes. Taipei Garden. Taipei Garden. Oh. Ah. Okay. Okay. But then now he stay at Lava. Mm. Uh, before that, before join Lava, he work at Tokyo Bandito. Uh, other company lah. Mm. Okay. So um, he also get married and got one children. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you all know Korang Lava. Then I uh for my opinion uh, okay Shahil look smart and handsome actually I encourage Shahil become six. <laughs>
Feel free to go ahead with it. Okay, we'll talk about that. Alright. Uh, are you with me? Yes. yes? Good. Alright. So this is our agenda. We started a bit late, uh, but we have intro. Then we will continue with our Employment Act Module 1. We will take a break about 15 minutes where you can have a nasi mark and a kopi ice. I'm, I think it's here really. I think. So after that, we'll come back to do retrenchment. And we have a shorter break just to go to you know, maybe we'll do the things. And then come back, sexual harassment at the workplace. And one more break. And finally, we'll end with other HR matters. So basically, this Q&A is for you to ask questions. Things that I am not covering. Things that um, I covered and then I wasn't clear earlier. You ask again, can also. I will try to answer your question as much as I can. If, uh, if there are any questions that I do not have to answer, I will go and search, go and dig, go and ask around and I will get back to you. Alright? So, let's start with Employment Act. The first one. Let's play some game. Okay? Sorry, no prizes, but if you, if you know the answer, shout out. Okay? What is the name of the act? Employment Act, I guess, What? Employment Act, 1995. What year? 1955. 1955, yes. 1995. It's Employment Act, 1955. Okay? No more money. No more coffee. Okay, good. Number two. What is the minimum annual leave entitlement in the Act? If you know already, you mean if you answer already, give other people chance to ask. Who? Who? Eight. Eight days. That's the minimum, right? Okay, good. So, yeah, Employment Act. Eight days. Tapi, actually there's a graduation kan? Increment as you go along. So, what is the increment? You start at 8, right? Then? 12. How do you get 12 days? 2 years. 2 years. 2 years at the birth. And less than 5 years. After 12 days? 6. Okay. Above 5. Above 5. Yeah. So 8, 12, 16. That is the law. So if your leave is more than that, you are safe. If your leave is less than that, your staff will complain, you are in trouble. Okay, this is the minimum. Um, just want to be emphasize this. If the X says A, you give more than A, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, everything else cannot. You must keep it to the minimum. <coughs> right? What is the minimum public holiday entitlement in the Act? How many public holidays you must give your employee? Anyone? Eleven days. Eleven. Eleven. Sure. Are you sure? Sure. Good. Eleven days. Eleven days. Stop it, huh? Eleven days, huh? Wait, fifteen years. Let me show you how. <laughs> okay, good. What are the compulsory public holidays in the act? Merdeka. You already answered some person. <laughs> Someone else. Who else? Who haven't answered? Can try? I don't know. Okay, okay Merdeka, you gave me. Okay, each one give me one. One person give me one day. Uh, Merdeka, okay, one. Correct? Malaysia Day. Malaysia Day. Hari Pekerja. Hari Pekerja? Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year. The five. Monday, ah, Malaysia Day. Ah, ah, Labor Day. Ah, Gold Birthday. Okay, correct. Sultan Birthday. Yes, State Sultan Birthday. We do five days. Okay, compulsory. What does that mean? Compulsory means if you ask your staff to work on these five days, you have to pay them. You cannot ask them to take replacement leave. Chinese New Year, if you ask your staff to take uh, replacement leave, okay, for example, uh, Didi, you must come to work on first year of Chinese New Year because operation needs you. You have to come. 
then you take replacement. You can take replacement. Of course, company can choose to pay you. Of course, they can. So either you pay or you replace. But if I go to birthday, Didi, you must come to work today. You can take replacement leave next day. Cannot. You must be paid. So that's the difference compulsory between non-compulsory. So if you notice, just now we talked about minimum parking day is 11 days. Compulsory is 5. So what happened to 6? Up to you. Okay? So public holidays, the rest is up to you. You want to give more? Can. You want to follow all the public holidays? Can. You want to follow... Um, oh. You want to follow... Uh, go, uh, sorry. Declaration of public holiday by states also is up to you. If you notice that recently we have a lot of public holidays, state declare, federal government declares. Okay? There are two types of special holidays, since we're talking about it, I saw mention. If it is declared by the federal government, in most cases, 99%, compulsory, must follow. Federal government. If it's announced by state, not compulsory. So remember, uh, what was it that day we have? Friday, extra day, guys. Yes. Not compulsory. Okay? If Slangor wins Matik, uh, Malaysia Cup, the MD declares, holiday, SO2 Sorry, everybody come back to work. Okay? Kechuali, Kechuali Jeff, also Slangor supporter, very happy. <laughs> He announced everybody will pop off. Then okay, no? okay. Mm. okay? So state declared holidays usually not binding. Federal one, yes, in general. So so this one is clear like this. You have to if when people ask you, you don't have to ask uh Janine, you don't have to ask me, you don't have to ask uh, Joyce or your, your, your teacher. Hey, holiday or not? Slamo one or what? Okay, things like that. I think oh. Before that, let's sort of go back to number one. The name of the Act is Employment Act 1955. Just so you know, it covers only East. Peninsula Malaysia, Malaya. It doesn't cover Sabah and Sarawak. What do they have in Sabah Sarawak? Do you know, Priscilla? You're from Sarawak? Do you know? Sarawak Labour Ordinance. Sabah is Sabah Labour Ordinance. Is governed by your state, not by federal. So at that point, at one point, um, I think it was last year or early this year, they were chasing, they were pushing for state in Sabah Sarawak to change the minimum wage also. Remember the minimum wage is one thousand five, right? Actually, it's not compulsory in Sabah Sarawak. It's not yet. Sabah Sarawak is not yet one thousand five. It's just that it because. If you know the history of Sabah Sarawak, they have their own uh, special privileges, special rights. So it's a bit different. It's a bit unique. It's a status. Um, I'm not talking about it. I'm not talking about politics, but basically it's like this. Malaysia is formed by Peninsula plus Sabah and Sarawak. Mm -hmm. It's not Malaysia, it's not Sabah Sarawak joins Malaysia. You have to understand that. That's the that's the history of all it. So that's why if you, if you look at them, they talk about the, they, they, they talk about all these rights of Sabah, the states of uh, Sabah and Sabah is different. Because of that, um, there were some changes done in the parliament in the uh, 70 or 80s to change it to a uh, state instead of a region. So it, it's a bit tricky. Lah. You have to go back and study the history. Lah. Uh, but that's the, that's the fact. Lah. So that's why Sabah and Sabah have different things over there. Quite interesting. Lah, huh? okay. Alright, so let's move on. What is the minimum probation period mentioned in the Act? What is the minimum probation? You know, when you join a company, you get tempo percubaan, probation. What is the minimum? One. Who says one? Hands up. Hands up. Confident. Confident, hands up. Okay, one. Okay, good. Two months, hands up. Hands up. Three months, hands up. <laughs> why, why, why you took such a long time? Hands up. <laughs> Don't know, hands up. <laughs> Simply tell my hands up. 
Okay. The answer is there's no mention of the wage of in the app. It's a trick question. Okay? In the app, no mention of tempo perjubahan. There's no such thing as probation in the app. Okay? I purposely put that so that you remember. There's no such thing. So what is what is the implication? What it means is once you join the company, whether you are probation staff or confirmed staff, you enjoy the rights of an employee. Regardless. Okay? Example, medical leave you must give. Hospitalization you must give. Maternity, if you qualify, you must give. You, you fulfill the, the, the certain things, like you must give. And you leave. Can we give? Yes, but depends. Okay. Why yes, but depends? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> but I don't know how to answer. <laughs> okay. If you say annual leave, okay, is it that our employee new or not new, you, you still enjoy the benefits of the employee? Why certain companies, like Lanky or I think Lanky also, if you're not confirmed, you don't get annual leave. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Most companies do that. Right? It's because in the act says you must work for one calendar year to get your annual leave. John mm -hmm. if you ikut, bulat bulat. Okay, Akta. January 1st I join, huh? First I join. I cannot take leave, annual leave until the next year. That is that is the, the act. Right? So for a company to give you to use, let you use the act, the annual leave now, is it within the company's right? It's better than what the act says. Can if you're confirmed within three months, you can use your annual leave. It's better than one year later. So, so that's why. So an employee cannot say that I tak dapat and only tak tak agil. You're discriminating me, no? Mm -hmm. Because the law says you can only get a leave after the one year calendar year finish. So that is how it is. So after one year, even though the company not officially said that you are confirmed, then okay, you may take a leave. Okay, good question. So what you're saying is, <laughs> what you're saying is, let me rephrase that is if. You work the the as the employment letter says you are in probation of say three months. Three months later, six months later, ta ada surat, nothing. Okay. You need to see what what are the things that you get to enjoy. So, as long as you are still not allowed to enjoy the full benefit of an employee of a confirmed staff, mm -hmm. then you are not confirmed. You must get a letter from the company. However. If, in my opinion, if you have three months of probation, mm -hmm. March, end of March, your confirmation date, new date, mm -hmm. April onwards, May, June, tak ada you ask your boss, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. But if you apply leave, your boss approve annual leave, you never give. In my opinion, you have been treated like a confirmed staff. So, in fact, you are confirmed, even though you tak ada surat. That is my opinion. Of course, this will open up if you want to fight, argue when the staff resign. Oh, if you take leave, you must stay back. You can go to court and argue. But in my opinion, is if you have treated the staff as a confirmed staff, he or she is confirmed, even without that. So that is why very careful. You need to be careful how you treat a confirmed staff. Can a confirmed staff get paternity leave? Because that's not in the act. I mean, last time, last time. You know, let's talk about last time. You know, things like that. So you have to be careful. Special leave, for uh, example, um, emergency leave. For example, uh, um, some, Sometimes company will give. Okay, if you have a uh, death in the family, you get uh, compassionate leave two days for confirmed stuff. If that person is not confirmed, you give the person compassionate leave. Then you're treating him as a confirmed stuff. Really. I argue like that's my argument. That's confirmed stuff. So you have to be careful. So there's all these things you must know as a HR. Not that you want to be uh, calculative. Mm -hmm. No, 
you have to that because otherwise you set a very bad precedent, you know, and then it becomes an issue next time. We want to avoid all this uh, misunderstanding, so we have to follow. That's why rules are there, so there's no confusion, there's no more no dispute, no misunderstanding. Okay, so that's our five questions. Hopefully you all remember, and there is no probation period in the end. Okay. Any question? Are we clear? Yes? Okay. I'll move on. Huh? Alright, good. good. Important amendments. So all this thing started in January 2023. The most important two things you must know when it comes to the new changes are these. The Act now covers all employees regardless of wage. Last time, 2000 and below, or manual labor, you are protected by the Act. But if your salary above 2000, your salary 2005, 4000, sorry, you are not covered. Everything goes to your contract. Equal contract, much Okay? So everything now, we are all employees. You can be 1005, you can be 15,000, 30,000, you are covered by the Employment Act. You must have the same rights as employer, uh, as employee, sorry. Number two. However, oh, sorry, let me go back. Uh, employees with basic salary more than 4,000 are exempted from overtime pay and termination compensation regulations. This is your retrenchment benefits. So if your salary is more than 4,000, 4,000 you're still under EA. You can still claim OT. You can still claim uh, compensation if you are terminated. The company must give you. If you are selling your salary is four thousand and one, you are not entitled to. Company need not give you OT if you work more than that. If company wants to give you, can or not? Can because more than A. Everything they give you is more than better than the the act can. Okay, so. They are all protected, but no OT for some of us. Okay. So let's go on to the details. Those that will very, very much impact our company and maybe some of you as well. Okay. Maternity leave. How many days? Eight. Okay. Good. You all know. Ninety-eight days, fourteen weeks. Last time was sixty days. Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight days, fourteen weeks is con continuous, huh? So, you must include public holiday, off day. day, everything. Okay? Doesn't matter. Why 14 weeks? I think I mentioned before to my staff. Why 14 weeks? Why 98 days? Why not 90? Why not 100? Ah, why? Yes. Why? In short, International Labour Organization. I have a standard. So it's I hold in the sense we are following international. Oh. Yeah, that's the standard set by I I L O. Fourteen weeks, ninety eight days. Then last time doesn't have this. Now got this. Employee can return early to work with consent. What it means is, if um, my employee, my staff, okay, let's say Lily, Lily is taking maternity leave for 98 days. 60 days later, she wants to come back to work. Or I ask her to come back to work. Both sides agree? Can. Okay. So the next question is, hey, why so stupid? 98 days take lah, why must come back? Right? Right? So what are, what are the benefits of coming back to work? Why must, why one, why an employee wants to come back to work? Bonus, you end. What's that? Got bonus. <laughs> bonus what? You will reimburse you. Reimburse what? Wait, don't say, don't say reimburse it out. Clarify, what, what reimburse? That means they will pay you back. Pay you back. Okay, yeah. Good. That's up to us. The app doesn't say anything. The app is very silent. The app says that can come back. So, as an employee, if you want to come back, Maybe the employer will offer you, you know, really, if you come back, uh, you after 60 days, you come back, 38 days, too, I pay you. I pay extra. 
I pay your salary or I pay half your salary, for example. Lah. No, you never know. Maybe a company is small, the company needs that person to come back even uh, urgently, you know. They, they, don't have, they don't have enough time to go and hire someone to come in, or, or maybe the replacement temporary worker came in, work, 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 jab, jab, work. Never know. So maybe, you know, hey, hey, the staff, the replacement, the temporary worker just left. Can you come back next week? You come back, I give, I give you extra. Or I give you annual leave extra. Up to you. Mutual uh, understand. Ah, mutual lah. So you have to agree lah. So you have to make it like properly, in, in that sense, to clarify that everything is done on the board. Which means HR will give a letter, you know, uh, they really uh, we confirm that you come back on what day or day, we will offer you this money. Or we will offer you annual leave, whatever. Things like that. It's up to the company to discuss with the employee. So that's a good thing about that. If I as an employee, I ask Lily, can you come back? Lily says no. Lily says no. I cannot force her. Okay? It is her right to take 40 weeks full. It's up to negotiation if the employee is willing to come back. Okay? So, is your wife working? Okay? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you are working, I can ignore <laughs> Alright, so if you plan to have one more child, uh, these are things that you can think about. Lah, okay? You never know, because sometimes 60 days is enough for some people because the family support is very good, very strong. You know, you've got husband very supportive, or, or mother in law, or mother, or sister, whatever. You never know. So it, is, it can work. Right? You decide. Employee, you decide. Paternity leave, you mean, Rapper Hari? Seven. seven consecutive days, which means I uh, Yes, If your if your if your wife deliver on eve of uh, Madeka, sorry, that day also count. Madeka also count. Okay, whatever her day, whatever off day, it counts. So if you start work on if your leave start on Monday, you your leave ends on Sunday. Seven days full. Consecutive and it is restricted to five confinements. Lima, Anji. Okay, five confinements. Last one to qualify for that, you must be employed at least 12 months before commencement of paternity leave. Chonto, I joined 1st of January. My anak come out 30th of December. Do I qualify? Do I qualify? You, you I, I come in, I joined the company 1st of January. Uh -huh. My baby come, came out, uh, come out 30th of December. Qualified? No. no. Why? Not over one, uh, still within one year. Within one year. Uh, I shot my leg. Yes. If the baby comes out on 31st, then it's one year. So one year. I mean, you count it easy. I'm just giving a number easy to count now. So you must qualify, you must qualify this. This is very important. 12 months. Yeah, minimum 12 bulan. Kalau anak keluar dalam tempo 1 tahun, tak boleh. You don't qualify for paternity leave. So kena tunggu. You ask your baby to wait lah. <laughs> <laughs> ask your baby to wait. Oh, oh, oh. Plan lah. Okay, so <laughs> unfortunately that way. Um, however, because previously when when we, we, we had we didn't have this part, most companies already give paternity leave, right? You can still give. You can still give two days, three days. But I would strongly advise don't give seven days. You will mess up a lot of things. You make it very confusing. Okay. Or oh, if you have any question while I talk about this, please feel free to ask me. Okay, don't wait until the end. Right? You can always ask me anytime. So, please make sure you follow this. Seven days you must give only when they qualify. If they don't qualify, you can give your one day, two days, three days as previously. You will separate the issues, it's easier. Okay? I have a question. Five confinements. Let's say, like, for example, okay, Shahid, let's say, lah, contoh, lah. Contoh, Shahir, you already got five children when you join. You work for more than one year. You deliver your board, you deliver, your aunt, your history, deliver again. Anak ke enam. Do you qualify? No. No, huh? No, why do you 
in part two five confinement. Part two five. Okay. It cannot be because oh, ini anak pertama saya waktu saya kerja di sini. You know, it doesn't work that way. It's not fair. Imagine you work, let's say, every every year you work one new company. Uh, every two years you work in a new company. Every year you have child. Number seven, number eight, four. You still get. It, it, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. So five confinements is five confinements. Okay. Um, there's a difference between five confinements and five surviving children. I just go back a bit. Maternity leave, you can take up to five surviving children. Contoh, if you have five children, ni anak anak kamu, you don't qualify for maternity leave. Tapi kalau anak ni ada anak tu, you have five child, five children. One pass away. You have another one. Berapa? Still can. Okay, so as long as it's five surviving, can for for mak, for papa, five confinements. Itu saja. Tak kira you ada berapa kerja, tak kira you ada berapa isteri. Okay, doesn't count lah. Oh, this is my all. My first wife, I got two. I divorced with another one. Ah, cannot, cannot, cannot. Alright. You stick with five confinements. Alright. How many you have? They count. You don't qualify. Means you don't qualify. So. Please be aware of this. Yes. If the staff didn't tell us to do, you have to find out. Okay. All right. There's a question here. Janice is asking, what if the staff doesn't tell us? How? Okay. You remember our our application form? Usually you say, who is your wife? How many children you have? That's why that that part become very important. That's one part. And of course, along the way, when you have children, as HR, you need to be aware. Sometimes, unfortunately, we have to try our best to check and track. But not normally, right? When you let's say your family expand, let's say when you join, you only have one kid, right? When you join, after that, you have more kids. Really, you need to update the HR. By right, you should have. So that they update the record. If your company is small, it's a lot easier. But our company is how many people? Eight hundred ninety people. That is the challenge. So there is a possibility of staff not telling you. They can feel it single before. Yes, because okay. They can feel single, and maybe it's true single at the time. Ten years later, they got six children. You don't know, right? It can happen. So. It will be very difficult. Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you, except that you have to be careful. If you see anybody taking paternity leave, you have to check. Maybe ask your PIC or RM, regional manager, whoever is in charge. Then think how many kids the person have. You know, think, check. That's the only thing. If you do not know, then you don't give. You 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 can just give up. Unfortunately, you cannot prove it. Okay, for the maternity, right? The yep. confinement for paternity is five. So what about maternity? How many you can give? Huh? Five. Five. Five, five survival, surviving children. Maternity. No, maternity. Yo. Maternity also five. five uh, maximum is five. Okay. Uh. Five confinements for paternity. Five surviving children for maternity. Mother. Then if no more six, ah? Mother. Mother. Kecuali kalau kalau nasib mana? One pass away, pregnant again, can. Or two pass away, pregnant again, can. Can or four. Five hundred days. Oh no. Always. Maternity. Maternity ni, mak mak ni ya, cuma untuk anak lima anak yang hidup. Yang boleh ambil lima. Ya boleh. Kalau ada lima anak yang hidup, kelima boleh. Tapi kalau ada enam enam anak yang terenam tak layak. Kalau ia ambil betul betul. Tak boleh. Tapi kalau malangnya kalau ada satu yang meninggal, cuma tiga empat kan? Anak enam dan jadi lima kan? Boleh. As long as remain as five can for mother. Mother has special right. Father tak boleh. Confinement saja. Tak kira bapa isteri. Okay. So that's the difference. Anything else? Before we move on. Then maybe maybe the first day of the maternity leave or paternity leave. Confirm the baby come out, start to count the first step. Okay, 
Good question. So basically, you want to know when maternity leave and paternity leave can start, right? Paternity leave starts on the day the baby is born. So today, let's say my baby is born, if I write today, I take lah. But if my baby born in the evening, I will finish work or whatever. No point lah. Why, 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 why do that? So, next day, okay. Um, maternity leave also starts on the day the baby is born. But mother can request to start early. Start early, you can consider it is apply AL or maternity. Maternity. Oh. So if I early, how early? How early? How early? Uh, one month after one month. I okay. I have to check. I have to check. But in practice, most people will give lah. Most company will give. You want to start early? Can. Uh, one month. I think it's up to one month. So suddenly. You, yeah, you don't want you don't want your you don't want your worker come here, come to work, suddenly water break, we'll go out. Panic. 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 You cannot run away for 98 days. <laughs> you cannot run away. Early or late, so you still have to give 98 days. You might as well have a day that you both agree on, then you have emergency. You know, I still come to work. I suddenly to work or to go and deliver. You might as well plan ahead. You give one one month you know, ahead. At least you are safer. Or two weeks ahead. So, you have to plan. So yes, please go. But then you cannot lie. Yeah. Why don't you go back? Oh, you have to wait, wait for the baby to come out. But, oh, but you, you sit under the tree. Uh. You, you know, it doesn't happen that way. Right? <laughs> okay. So, anything else about maternity and paternity? Clear? Mm-hmm. You with me? Right. Okay, work hours. Previously, it was 48 hours per week. Now, it's 45 hours. And you see here. This is the one that I'm very concerned about. It impacts our OT. Okay. 45 hours per week. Does it mean that the person must work same every day? Seven and a half hours uh, for, for six week. days. For one week. One week yeah. Does it mean that way? Yeah, no. Okay. Doesn't mean that way. Yeah. 45 hours per week means that's the maximum mm-hmm. on that, that week. If you do more than 45 hours, it can't mm-hmm. The app allows it that if, for example, um, I work five days, I can uh, I allow to work less on three days and work extra on the two days to make up 45 hours. Law allows it. But the question is, is it necessary? That's why most, most people don't do that. Most people just flat it out every hour, every day the same. In practice, lah, it's easier. If you start work funny funny hours every day, huh, you count as crazy. So that's why people don't, don't split that way. People just move it flat. So 45 hours per day means if you work six days, it's seven and a half hours, excluding lunch break. If you work five days, how long can you work? How many hours per day? Nine. Nine hours. By right. Company has a right to ask you to work for nine hours. Five days lah, if lah. Mm-hmm. But most cases people don't lah. Just telling you that's the possibility lah. You cannot run away. You cannot say that your boss is overworking me. No. <laughs> because X is can 45 hours. Okay. Mm-hmm. We will be talking about OT afterwards. Okay. I will share the rate and everything later. Lah. Mm-hmm. The next one, separation of sick leave from hospitalization leave. Last time, you got sick leave put together under hospitalization as well. Mm-hmm. So, last time hospitalization, if you have 60 days, you take MC for two weeks. If you cannot langa, you must hospital. It's 60 minus 14 days. Right? But not anymore. Now, is separated. Below two years, you got 14 days, six leave. 
2 to 5, 18 days. Above 5 years, 22 days. So in total, 74, 78, and 82. Separated. You can take MC 14 days. You will accident in Maxwell Hospital, you will still have 60 days. <laughs> One thing good for, for all of us is Employment Act is very pro employee mm -hmm. in Malaysia. That's why um, a, sometimes a foreign companies are a bit hesitant to join coming here. Oh. Oh. Singapore, oh. apparently, Singapore more, more pro uh, employee. Oh. America, 100% employer. Oh. Employer can sack, sack you anytime they want. There's no job guarantee in America. Mm -hmm. What? No, no mercy. No mercy one. You can sack one anytime. Can America got that you can? I am not sure. <laughs> I am not sure. <laughs> it's a full, full, full uh, <laughs> free market. It's full free market. Everybody. And also that's a danger. <laughs> that's that danger. Right? Let's go back. Okay, this one is, I think, he came up because of MCO. Uh, flexible. flexible working arrangement. Okay. In short, employee has the right to write a letter requesting from the employer that he or she wants to work on a flexible working arrangement. Example. Um, I come in at 8.30, I finish at 5.30. I want to request that I start work at 10 and finish at 7. Can not? Right. Then company must reply within 2 months, 60 days, yes or no. And must give reason why la. Can or not? Okay. Last time it is not in the act. If it's not in the act, employee can ask. Right? Boss can keep right saying. But now that it's in the act, the boss must reply in, in writing, uh, cannot just say, uh, okay, cannot say, okay, cannot also. You must reply. Okay. Any question about this part? Go from home, can also. That is also another, another way of saying flexible working arrangement. Can or not ask, write a letter. Let the company decide. You can. That is your right to ask. But it is also the company's right to reject or approve. So don't be too happy, lah. You know? Let's say employer must approve, must accept. No. Nothing is absolute. Alright? I haven't shared this much with the, the staff because I think it is unnecessary at this point. But do not, in case if you get a letter or you have a, a staff that asks you want to do that, at least you know it's their right. You know, don't just say you cannot. Know, right? Discrimination in employment. Fine not exceeding 50,000 ringgit or daily fine of not exceeding 1,000 for, um, for offence continuation after conviction. Discrimination in employment means you're not fair. Lah. You give, you give special unfavorable treatment to someone. What is a good example of discrimination? Can anybody give me? Um, extra leave. Extra leave? Mm -hmm. Extra leave or less leave? I must see you time in, time out, at one time, one time. 
And then I want you to sign attendance with me in front of me every day. Is that discrimination? Yes. Yeah, yeah, discrimination. As long as you're doing something different, that person gets something less than everybody else, or a certain group of people getting something less than the rest, then it can become a discrimination. Another one, common one, foreign workers. How you work with the foreign workers? Do you give them special treatment? Or, so I put unfavorable, not special, unquote, uh, quote unquote, unfavorable treatment. Example, all of us got 11, uh, okay, all of us got 15 days and uh, chuti. These are the list. And these are the list for, for the foreign workers, only 11 days. Is that discrimination? Dangerous. Be careful. All this. If anybody goes and complain, you in trouble. Because all employees, foreign or local, all employees, they must have the same uh, rights or benefits. Must be that. Medical uh, medical benefits, if it's category, exact, non exact, manager, that's different things. Okay, that's, a, that's the pay rate, lah, depending on your grade. Right? But general things, it must be across the board, same. You cannot have different things for different people. Right? Yes, yes. Do you have foreign workers? Uh, no one. Right. So be careful lah. You have all these things you must have. Uh, in example for this COVID-19, mm. uh, we have talked to you already, right? Our yes. Yeah. Yes. For all of us or for... If, if you are in... In branches and HQ, you have separate holidays, that is fine. But if you are in the same office, you have to work, the rest have no, no uh, the rest can duty, then it's good discrimination. So that's why if you, if you have branches, it's good to have a list of holidays you set up for all the branches. These are the state holidays, these are the have. Because HQ normally will follow all. All will do. That's the benefit. Of Benefits la. It depends la. I mean, you are not an animal, so your boss will decide la, for you. Operation, you will still have to move, right? But whether you guys uh, will have to follow the same holidays, it's up to you. Right? And Sarawak, Sarawak has more holidays on it. Sarawak has more holidays Oh, speaking about that, this one protects all employees in the peninsula. Remember we said Sarawak, Sarawak, but Sabah and Sarawak are labor ordinance. The salary is 2005 below. It doesn't cover all yet. So until Sabah and Sarawak amend their rules, their law, anyone who works there actually has to follow, can still follow uh, 2005 below, that kind of protection. They don't, they don't give OT to those above 2005. It's a bit different, huh? Last, I think this is the last one I'm coming. No prohibition of night work for women. Last time, the act says women cannot work at night. Now can. There are certain jobs uh, women cannot work still, I think. But the important part for us is this one, women can work at night. Especially for logistics. If you want to, if your woman, if your female staff is willing to work at night, lah, wants to work at night. Let's say you may have women drivers. You never know. I mean, not many, but you have who are willing to drive at night. They can work. Last time cannot. Illegal. Prohibition. At night means eight pm. What is that? We assume that eight seven seven eight pm. At night. So if you see like um, company like retail company like what company? Retail. Retail company. Uh, I think that one they allow. Yeah, I think because they work around nine ten o'clock, it's fine. Remember also last time the Apple Act covers those below two thousand. So if the salary is below two thousand, you're fine. You have to remember that part also. I employ someone, uh, I pay you two thousand five. I say you juggle night shift. No problem. Okay. Cover, the act doesn't cover. But now, now the act covers everybody. 
So this comes in very important. Okay? Are you with me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh, there's one more. Sexual harassment awareness. This is inside the hand. Now, what it says is the company must actively promote anti-sexual harassment. Awareness must be there. You must tell people cannot do this, cannot do that. They got problem, inform us. Inform company, things like that. Okay, so that is compulsory. Um, most of it not been enforced yet, but I think uh, we have a bit of it. Lah. We have put some notice in the branches. Here, not so much, but a few. Lah. Okay. I will be talking a bit more on uh, sexual harassment awareness uh, later today. Session three. Okay. So, with that, any question before I move on? Clear? Mm. No question, huh? Okay. Here is the <laughs> interesting part. Here is where we have to use our brain a bit to think really. Okay. Over time, when you talk about over time, there are two terms you will hear a lot. One is the ORP, the other one is the HRP. What are they? Not human resource something, huh? <laughs> Not o -R -P. O -R -P and HRP. Um, what do you mean? Ordinary rate pay and hourly rate pay. What is ORP? Basically, it means in short, how much you get paid per day, your daily wage. Satu hari, how much? Hourly, satu jam, how much you get paid? And how do you calculate your ORP? Gaji, pokok, bahagi, dua puluh enam. Okay, that one you must give. Um, HRP, satu jam, berapa? That is a question that becomes tricky because of the new act. Question is eight hours or seven and a half hours? Last time for the eight hours it divided by six. You work eight hours per day. So your gaji bagi dua puluh enam bagi lapan. Now, if you work six days, your gaji your gaji should be twenty six then divided by seven point five hours. If you work six days, tapi tapi ya. Kalau kerja lima hari saja, not here lah. Other next time you go to other companies, you work only five days. Your OT rate becomes divided by eight. Okay, for us, operation logistic seven and a half. So the rate becomes higher. And this is how you calculate. If a staff work on a normal day, tak ada lah, boleh pilih salary kan? But if he works after that, every hour is 1.5 HRP per hour. So, whatever rate it is, times 1.5. That's how we come here. For TV, for a normal day. Rest day. Kalau dia ni minta orang kerja, Unless you want to give replacement day, that's a separate issue. Okay, you can still give replacement day if you want for rest day. Tapi kalau tak bagi, you have to pay that. If the person work less than four hours, half day, less than half hour, day, you have to pay that half day wage. This one, ORP times zero point five. And if he works full day, one point. Half a day, you get half. Okay. Half day, half. Okay, sorry, I think this is my mistake. Sorry, it's two by five, two by five also. My bad. It's one day. You pay them one day. Extra one day. Okay, this is the mistake. My bad. It's supposed to be zero by five. But after after the normal hours, you get the hardest times two. Okay. The last one, public holiday. Kalau you bagi dia cuti. Hari raya, replacement, no problem. Tapi kalau hari buruk, 1st of May, 
and not lagi. You have to pay them twice the salary. So make it easy. Let's say your gaji is thousand five. Thousand five divided by thirty, fifty minutes. Okay, you can bagi that. Seratus ringgit. Okay, and OT is three times the OT. Ah, uh, the HRP. Okay, so that is the format. Right now, ah, because you have to start talking after this. So you send this note to us, ma? Huh? Just now you said later you send this. You send this to us? I will share this to you, of course. I will, but later we'll after this we'll the next slide is going to come later. Oh, okay. So just remember, ah, I will not be talking about this. I'm going to do this today. Practice for you. Okay. One point five, two, three. Remember, it is twenty six. O R P twenty six, and H R P is. Seven point five, yeah. Okay. So now let's have a look calculation. Now I already give you the first one. Thousand five ORP is fifty seven point six nine. HRP is seven point six nine. So normal OT rate is eleven point five four. Rest AOT is fifteen point three eight. Twenty three point zero seven is PHOT. How do I get the number? Thousand five divided by twenty six is fifty seven point six nine. Fifty seven point six nine divided by seven point five. Seven point six nine. Back lagi ya. Back lagi, okay. Boleh. Ini. Okay. Okay. So come back here. So this one I say you right. Thousand five bagi dua puluh enam. Lima puluh tujuh ringgit enam ratus sembilan sen. Lima puluh tujuh ni bagi tujuh point five tujuh ringgit enam ratus sembilan. So the normal OT is one point five times seven point six nine sebelas ringgit lima puluh empat sen betul. Rest day dua darab tujuh point enam sembilan lima belas ringgit tiga puluh lapan. pH seven point six nine darab tiga. Jadi tujuh ringgit seven sen. Sekarang ada di bawah sini tiga gaji, basic gaji. Please calculate for me. Dia punya ORP, HRP, and the OTs. Okay? I give you dari lagi, dari lagi, dari lagi, dari lagi. Okay. Okay. For example, one one thousand five bagi dua puluh enam dapat. Fifty seven point six nine. Fifty seven point six nine bahagi tujuh point five dapat ini. So for normal OT bahagi bahagi lima puluh tujuh bahagi berapa? Tujuh point five. Tujuh point five. Oh tujuh point five. Ah okay. So this is the hourly rate. Untuk dapatkan ini, this times one point five dapat ini. Untuk ini, this Seven point six nine times two, you get this. Untuk ini seven point six nine times three. Okay, so ikut saja semua ke bawah. Same thing. I give you maybe three minutes. You let me know. Okay. Three minutes. Or maybe four minutes. I give you something. Also go up, bye bye. 
always up, round up, huh? number must go up, you cannot go down. It's point, point two three one. let's say, then the one, you cut out, three becomes four. Two, three, four. We always give more, you cannot go less. Yeah. Then if two, one, two, zero, two, five, or zero, two. This one must go to three. Then we can stop at here. Ah, here, yeah, correct. I don't want this one to pass, cannot. You must go five. Five out of three. Because they said that you are short changing your stuff. JDK, one thing about JDK is they are very protective of the employee. You give less, half percent, like that also, you will make a problem out of, out of it. You could have issues. They may talk to you, complain here and there. So to eliminate your issue, go up. After all, it's less than one cent. You know? Then that's mean the uh, if point six nine two is going to sell zero. Yeah, correct. Not six nine. Go up. Always go up. Sorry? Can the company hit? Can the company hit? I'm giving you the one. Good question, I appreciate that. Yeah, I wanted to, actually this one I saved for later on as well. But uh, Priscilla was very observant. She said that, hey, 4001, I thought it's above. Correct, it is above the act. So the company can choose not to give. But if the company wants to give, can or not? Yes. Yeah. Uh, can. Because A, above, more than A. Yeah. What? What? We not, we're not gonna, we are assuming that the company wants to give. Okay, uh, we'll fit we have about. Wait. Wait, uh, not finished. Okay, I'll, I'll give you another minute. We got one more minute. Left. Everybody done? As long as you get your ORP and your HRP correct, the rest is easy really. It's the ORP, yeah, HRP that's the problem. Your HRP, 
8.72, correct? Correct, huh? So, um, Nisa, what is the OT? Normal OT? 30.05 Wrong one Okay, uh, Priscilla, what do you get for rest day OT? Oh, okay 17.44 Alright, OT, PH, OT, 26.16 Two five. Um, Shane, what is the ORP? Uh, two five. ORP. Uh, ninety six point fifty. Correct. Sharon, HRP. HRP twelve point eight two. Normal OT. Uh, DB.
But if you take this and this and this system, calculate all the numbers behind, it become out less. Okay? For now, I'm using Excel sheet also. I be so I will die. Whoever is the 
wants to join the department, or if I cut, uh, if I shut down a whole whole branch, end of discussion lah. That's the easiest lah, the safest. As example, I shut down. Uh, okay, let's see where that. Okay, I shut down. Uh, Puchong Puchong branch, whole Puchong branch all gone. Then case, then there's no issue. Okay, clear. Yeah. VSS voluntary separation scheme it is offered to a selected group of employees. So when the company wants to do uh, VSS, the company will basically have example go for a town hall meeting. You know, announce um, ABC company is not doing well. We are we are look at casting costs. So at this moment, we are open to uh, we want to offer voluntary separation scheme to employees. If you want to uh, if you want to take up the the, the offer, please speak to our HR. Example, okay, that's the first round. You say why I'm not talking about MSS first because DSS is always the first round. MSS comes later. DSS is company wide. Who wants to go? Please talk to us. Then we discuss. This offer will give you. Uh, diplomatic way, because it is not sudden. I close, I tell you, sorry, Shahir, bye bye. You know? This one is everybody, we are in trouble. If you want to go, you can go. But talk to us, we'll give you something better. Okay? When I say better compensation, because when you train someone, there's always compensation if you qualify. If the person doesn't qualify for compensation under retrenchment, BSS, they will also get something. Usually not. Otherwise, what should I go? What, is, what, what benefits me to go? Right? So that's why, why uh, you get better offer usually. Because retrenchment, there is a guideline how much you can give, how much you get. BSS is the way it's not written hard on a, on a rock or stone. You, know? you have you can negotiate. Or the company can offer you this amount of money. Okay. So once you've done BSS, usually there will be some people who will take it. But in most cases, you calculate, ah, I need to cut 10. Only 4 people uh, offered to take BSS. I need to cut 6 more. Ah, MSS comes in. Mutual separation scheme. So, in short, it's very similar. Same as VSS. It's basically, I come to you, uh, Nisa. Uh, do you want to consider doing some uh, mutual separation scheme? Discuss how much you want. You all will say, you give me a price. I give, I think, I think, I think, I think, Okay lah, I give you. <laughs> so you, you basically it's, a, it's it's more direct negotiation with one person. Okay, neutral separation. It's individual. This one is group. It can be second group or whole group. Okay. Um, if not mistaken, um, my sister in law last time was they offered to the lecturers. She was in the she was in the uni and college. They offered the lecturers to go. First round was VSS. She did not offer. They gave her MSS. Yeah. So it can happen. La. Even if you don't take VSS, MSS, you also can not happen. Like it or not. And if you don't take MSS, chances are she will retrench you. You get nothing. If you, if you are over the board. So an ethnic negotiation between two percent. Yeah. To company and, and, and employee, individual employee. Um, VSS more or less is set what they want to do with me. Okay, I have this offer, how much I'm willing to give, and come and take it. Okay, MSS maybe can get more. Not necessarily. Not necessarily, it could be still be the same. It could be less. I don't know. She worked for almost 20 years. Yeah. So she was about to retire. Uh. Then she was aiming for BSS. Is so she know? got it in you know, 300,000. <gasps> so she oh. jumped off from the third story. She <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought she. So the next day, she go to another center. 
refer to the teacher I mean she teach at that's the hour uh. oh she got like kena lottery no. you know years old if she's about to retire like 90 I think another 4 years oh, she's about to retire she planned to resign but she was like holding back holding back so when she got it like yeah. so I just know what happened to you to you Four five years. Okay, four five years is still considered long. So yeah, I, I think it's good for for company to give her that up. Um, I have a I have a colleague. No, I have a friend. My my wife's colleague. Ex. Oh, I'm, yeah, still colleague actually. My friend's uh, my wife's a colleague. She the company is going through restructuring. So she was hoping that she would get something like that lah. But I told her don't put your hopes up too high. You know why? Because she is 59 years old. Oh, <laughs> if I'm HR, I won't give you. You're too expensive. And some more, <laughs> she worked for more than 20 years in the company. Oh. Pharmaceutical, pharma, pharma company, a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, why would I give you one less than one year? And it's not like you're not contributing. You know? You're contributing still. It's just that I'm company restructuring. I don't need to cut. I want to spend so much money. So I won't. So it depends on the situation. Okay, company will always, if you can, if it's a big, big issue, BSS is the first place to go. Oops, sorry. BSS is the first place to go. Town hall meeting, discussion. I am going to retrench people. BSS, if you want, come talk to us. Filter, first round, finish. Not enough. Round two, individual. Come, let's talk. Okay? The thing is, this can be challenged in court because it's one way. I give you. This, we agree together. Which means these two must be drafted by lawyer. Oh. You need lawyer to draft a contract agreement that you agree to go, I agree to pay you, case closed. You cannot bring me to court. Oh. This one, tada. This one is, I tell you only. You tap on Sati, you put it on the Jabatan Perhubungan Perusahaan, JPP. JPP, not Labour Corp. Not Jabatan Tengah Kerja. Okay? There are two different departments. Okay? So, that is why the safest for a company to go is BSS and MS, not retrenchment. Retrenchment sometimes will cause key to headache. I have not done VSS MSS. I think Cheryl has experienced that. I'm not sure about the rest of you. But all this are not very good to the company image. It's not good to the employees' morale as well. So you have to be careful to decide whether it's worth to do it or not. You have to consider that there are consequences. In fact, even if I cut you, I keep her, you won't feel good. What's happening in the company? You know? mm. So you have to be careful about this. Uh, just now you say it must have lawyer. Lawyer hire money. Like lawyer, of course, is from the company, no? From the company. Mm. It's a it's a contract. Oh. It's an agreement. I you agree to resign. I agree to compensate you. It's the same thing as you go to um, if there is an IR case. Contoh lah, you have a case dengan jabatan perhubungan perusahaan. You want to settle settle a case, kan? You want to go to the industrial court. Jabatan also will have a letter, a document for both parties to sign. That means that you agree to both of you this amount, you cannot take it to court anymore. So it's always like that. Legal document. Of course, Industrial Relations Department, the other lawyer, the officer, they drafted a standard document. Right? Anything else? Shall I continue? Can I? Okay. So, the best thing now. Is this? This is the easy part to this share. Pass around. This is the document that you need to fill in to give to Jabatan Tenaga Kerja, Labour Department. Last time it's called Jabatan Buruk. I think Buruk sounds broke, so <laughs> so they changed to Tenaga Kerja. Okay. So this is the form Jabatan uh, Buruk PK. You can get it online. You look at the first page. You see that? 
I, I took this sample from Sarawak, I don't know why, but you see here on top there, in your paper there, sorry, let's go back here first. This part here, Tanggung Jawab Majikan, Responsibility of Employer. You have to report when there is a retrenchment, when there is a voluntary separation scheme, VSS or MSS, I would say actually. Perhentian kerja sementara, temporary layoff, and pengurangan gaji. Actually, this form is for four things. Retrenchment, separation scheme, temporary layoff, salary reduction. We are not going to talk about two, three, four because that is not what we are going to do. We are going to talk about retrenchment. Okay? Because as far as uh, retrenchment is concerned, it's more important. Got that? No. But the, form, the standard thing is the same. At the bottom, you see peringatan, reminder. Bahagian satu, actually it's not bahagian dan satu. Satu sehingga keempat. Bahagian satu keempat. You must submit 30 hari sebelum perhentian dilaksanakan. Contoh, if your termination starts on 30, 1st of August, 1st of August, 1st of August, huh? 30 days, kalau 30 hari, by 1st of July, you need to give relief. 30 days, 1 to 4. Lepas tu, you got bagian 5, 14 hari selepas perbantian, after 14 days, you retrench that person. So, if retrenchment starts on the 1st of August, 14 days, within 14 days, it means you must give by in two weeks time, from 1st to 15th. And last one, within 30 days after the termination. So, 1st of August is termination. You Last day, you must give 30th. 30th. Okay? So, these three things you need to be aware of. I will not tell you what to do because the form is very straightforward. Some some parts you can skip. For example, if you don't, you don't have four workers, you look, look, I think two, page three or four. There's one page where you you ask you about local workers, you ask you about four workers. So if your company has no four workers, cut. Forget about it. Okay? Forms are very straightforward, nothing difficult to fill in. Just input sahaja. How many staff you have, how many Malays, how many Indian, how many Chinese, how many Hindu Sarawak, something like that. Foreigners, which country, blah blah blah. Very straightforward. No, no need to calculate that much. Okay? Are we with me? Yeah? So, no need to worry about that. The most important about retrenchment is. What? Compensation. This one most important to me. Money. 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 Is that for individual or you want to retrench a group? A group. A group. Retrenchment usually is a group. If you retrench someone, individual, um, if you want to follow by right up, if you really retrench someone, one person, two person, also must fill in. Oh. All these things, if you fill in, you you won't get any issues. Up. If you don't fill in, you get in trouble. Up. Especially if it's a group. So who can sign for this document? CEO, CFO, CFO uh, GM, some companies GM, director, director, yes. Uh, preferably, don't ask your HR to sign up. You don't sign your phone. I rather not sign. I rather not sign. I can prepare the information, but please you sign. I will not bore you with the details. Straightforward. Nama syarikat, registration number, blah blah blah, when you want to sign. Okay? So, but do note that this, what is the difference? What is orang bagian tempat, bagian lima dan enam? Go and see, open bagian lima. 
Okay, everybody open bagian lima. What is important in bagian lima? Bagian lima, if you look, the first page is the same, but the second page, basically, they want to know how much you pay yourself. Bagian lima is dekat surat tiga belas. Tiga belas. Tiga belas. So, page thirteen. That one is for you to fill in how much you pay your employees for compensation. That's why calculation comes in. So you this card form to do the calculation. No lah, calculate. Otherwise, it's not taken. Okay, bagian enam. Open up, bagian enam. Bagian enam is basically buka surat enam belas. It is for you to tell them how many you cut and how many found in job within the thirty days. If you tak tahu, buat tak tahu lah, buat zero lah. You know? But they just want to know. I think it's it's more for statistics to know, not that you make noise about it. Just let me know. So these are the first the three things you need to do. Bagian empat sehingga empat bagian empat hingga empat satu hingga empat is thirty days before. Bagian lima is two weeks within two weeks. Bagian enam is within thirty days. Okay. So okay. You have to do this and submit. When you submit this, my suggestion: three, two copies. Or rather, print one more copy lah. You sign everything done already. Scan one more extra copy. You go to JTK. Tak payah buat appointment. You go to JTK. So it's not not something for one PK. So one you give to officer. One ask them to scan. John Doe. Pop. So we have a proof that you submitted. Okay, so that is important. So that's all. Three things, three times. You do the same thing. Scan. Keep. Okay, so now let's talk about money. Okay. In order to qualify for this employment termination and lay off benefits by regulation 1980, what are the requirements? How much your salary? Maximum? Module 1, just now what will we talk about? Talk about really. When I say uh, the changes, there are two things you must remember. The most important thing is four thousand. Ah, salary covered now. Yeah. First one is cover employee covers everybody. But the second one says four thousand below only gets OT and compensation. This one payment compensation. So your salary must be. Four thousand and below. If your salary is above five thousand, above four thousand, sorry, you don't qualify. Which means if you are retrenched, company does not have to pay. Only, only, only previous recently eight four thousand. Yeah, previous of two thousand. Previous of two thousand. Oh, is it? So if your salary. Oh, it's not okay. Okay, remember A. The X is A. You get more than A. If a lot of company, they always say, I will trench you, I give you one month salary for every year you work. But that's not in the, that's not in the regulation. Okay? So, in order to qualify, you must be 4,000 ringgit ke bawah. Kalau 4,100, you tak layak dapat ni. Company boleh terminate you, you trench you. Sorry, we don't have enough money, we have to close this branch. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Tapi kalau kapal yang dibuat kan, okay tak payah ikut peraturan ini. Okay, clear everything. Another thing, kalau gaji you qualify four thousand and below, you also need to fulfil one more important part. You kena kerja sekurang-kurangnya satu tahun. 
Kalau saya masuk January 1st, I kena retrench December 15th. Sorry, I don't qualify. Walaupun gaji saya empat ribu bawah. It has to be one year and minimum one year and minimum. Okay. Once you hit that, you will qualify already. Now let's look at how your compensation is going to be. Three things. This is what you need to do. I know very early. I'll keep it simple for you. If you if you are working less than two years, you get ten days wage for every year of employment. Ten days wage for every year of employment. Okay? How much? Let me explain how to calculate. I'll tell you later. If you work for two years, but less than five years, more than two two or more, but less than five years, you get fifteen days wage. For every year of employment, the best one, five years or more, twenty days wages for every year of employment. Okay, so just now again, I said some companies give one month for every year you work. It's not covered here. It is actually more than what the regulation says. So worry. So remember the numbers. Less than two years, ten days. Two. Or more, but less than five, fifteen. Twenty-four, five or more. So ten, fifteen, twenty. These two, these three numbers very important. Okay, because that is when you calculate later on, and then you look at the years. How do we calculate the day's wage? Here is how we do it. Compensation calculation. I explain first. Day wage. Your day wage is calculated from. Your actual gross salary for the last twelve months divided by three hundred and sixty-five days. So to make again making easy things easy, I want to retrain someone in January. I take salary from last year January to December. The total before deduction, ah, total bagi tiga ratus enam puluh lima. One year salary, whole year. So if you retrench someone in June, you have to take last year June to May. You, if you retrench someone in this year June, you take from last year, last year June, 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 July, August until May. Until this year May. Mm. But you can also do another way, which I sometimes do. I take May from last year. I do until April. Twelve years to twelve months. Get the average for three hundred sixty-five days, but I also get that I've done that before. Before also, the the amount won't vary that much, but it's about that. So you show that you have done because if you do that, it's easier for you to give to your staff earlier. If you wait, you that that you want to control ah, that means that you have to wait until the last day they work. You calculate, then only you give them. It's it takes some time, some time lah. So in order to fast, to do things faster. You can hit jump. You can push a bit earlier, one month earlier. So terminate in June. I take May to April. May last year to April this year. So by end of end of June, I already tell you how much you're getting. Okay. So your day wage done. Clear. Second one, length of employment. We talk about that, right? So years of service. We already said two years. We count from uh, less than two years. Two to five. And five and beyond. So the multiplier, the ten, the fifteen, and the twenty are the multipliers. I call them the multipliers. So here's the service. If you you just calculate how long they work. So to get your compensation, is you take the day wage times ten, fifteen, or twenty times how many years they they work. Okay. Uh, I know we, most of us don't work. Gangnam two, three, four, or five. So you put a decimal point there. For example, one point five, one point six, two point seven, two point three. Example. Okay, you use that as a amount years of service. Example. Here you go. Employee A. June twenty twenty. She joined. Retrench May thirty first twenty twenty two. His salary is one thousand five fixed. He is he has no commission. He has no other allowance. His minimum one thousand five hundred. So this 
So how many? How many? Uh, how many? How long he has worked?
The thing is also is it's very rare to have people coming up one year la, uh, two years la, sorry. <coughs> Usually it's less. I encounter people less than two years, uh, more than two years. Very rare to come up two years. Okay, clear here. Yeah? Now comes the fun part. <laughs> okay, so calculator, please get ready. You got Tony, you got Marina. Basic salary, I'm making easy for you. Actually, no, I'm not making easy. Okay? Basic is 1005. Join date is different. Termination also different. And the salary, this guy, this person, these two person, gum gum lah, they do sales. So they share this, they have the same same amount. Okay? So now your job is to find out what is their Ooh. daily wage is 12 months together divided by 365. Multiplier, oh sorry, duration, you need to find out. How long they work? Duration to in year. In, in year, in year. Months. No, duration is year. 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 So if it's two, two, uh, two years and plus, you must 2.5, 2.3, 2.4, whatever. Mm -hmm. Example, okay? Multiplier, 10, 15, or 20. Mm -hmm. So this one is straight, more straightforward. Once you know this duration, you know multiplier. So yang satu month, as a... Ini gaji here. 12 bulan sebelum dia kena pecah so, 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 Daily wage times duration times multiplier compensation. Okay, give it a try. Okay, it will take some time. I will give you. Is five minutes enough or you need more time? More time. Okay, ten minutes. I give you ten minutes. I will come over and you can, you can ask me questions. <laughs>
1,005 Apa ni? Why? Why I put 1,005? Think it is Because compensation is only kan Ini saja kan? But why do I put 1,005 in my calculation when when I do a Excel sheet I will always put 1,005 there Basically Yeah, basically why? Kenapa? Because when you compensate, you give compensation to someone for this What else you need to give? Leave Correct Compensation to be paid is actually two things Payment in lieu or annual leave Annual leave, you have to calculate how many leave he hasn't used or she hasn't used You're going to buy again So, you have to calculate that Payment in lieu also Kalau one month notice um, For example, I it's two months notice I still have to give you 1,005 Let's say I need to defend you in one month The last day is supposed to be 30th of September But I cut you on 31st I still have to give you 1,005 So important, you must have that And then usually on my sheet here I will calculate annual leave Payment and yield Tambah, 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 tambah I... Okay, I need to make things easy I will send you an Excel sheet that I do Sample For Sabah Sabah calculation For my... For me to see How I use it No, I'm not paying them This is... It was a calculation if It was a calculation if I have to pay So That's how it is now Okay So with that If you know this You are safe As long as you submit everything on time You do this calculation You give a letter to the staff Clear cut Okay but the employee also not the same, right? They just accept whatever they You have to do it fair to them, lah. be fair to them. If they go and see the JTK, Nampak? Okay, betul. Mm. So, once you have that, you have a number already, you want to do already, you put in your letter. For my practice, normally, I will give two letters. Letter number one, half, they have to be retrenched. Unfortunately, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Uh, we will calculate the compensation and give to you. Second letter, uh, this is the amount you give up. Any question? For the question for the month salary recalculation, is due gross or net? Gross. Gross. So let's say you cut that on the first of August. For me, I give lah. 
in, to me it's quite not that not a good thing to terminate people already you know they just join you cannot retrench so for me out of compassion I mean, do not want to do this it's not a lot that's why I did for some of them under population start still I give up this move in Jalan it truly depends on company one give or not what's the Termination, retrench retrenchment is termination, but retrenchment is because I cannot support the business anymore. I need to cut costs. Termination, in other way, is I terminate because your um, you got your discipline, lah. Mm. Big problem, you're not performing, mm. that kind of different thing, lah. So I don't use the word termination in retrenchment. Retrenchment is you terminate because the business cannot support you anymore. The cost will be cut on the cost. Yeah. So. That's the the staff is like terminate because the staff is problematic. Yes, not the Termination. Termination for the So it doesn't qualify to get a good management. No. Besides compensation from companies, where else can employees seek financial assistance? Hello, I retrench you. Yeah. What? So, yeah. so, 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 EIS, mm-hmm. employee insurance scheme. Only if you are retrenched. Like I said just now, if the subpoena issue, I terminate you, you cannot go. If you resign on your own, you cannot go also. Even though you know that company is closing, closing the business, you want to you want to retrench, you go first, you will lose that. Okay? Is retrenchment compensation subject to KWSP and Perpeso deductions? So all the compensation money plus annual leave, everything I pay you. Yes or no? No. Who say yes? Who say no? Yes or no? No. <laughs> Answer is no. Why? Why? Yes. Because the office is done. You go and see the the company website, the act, the website. You tell them compensation not not included. Even you go to JPP also not included. Tax, yes, tax deductible, yes. <laughs> but not uh, KWSP, no progressive. Uh, what is the difference between BSS and MSS? Remember? Voluntary yes. What is BSS? DVP. Voluntary separation What is MSS? What's the difference? Simplify it is that way lah. One is big, big group one announce one lump sum or one shot. First round nobody, nobody take or not enough people to go to MSS. Okay. Are we okay? If I don't want to be MSS ah, and I go to the MSS later on, I think MSS not good enough for me lah. So I can take back MSS or not. Okay, you know, you, know, you either take VSS or you don't want, you wait for MSS and don't want, and you change them now. Okay, any question? If not, summary. To be honest, it's not that difficult. Just that a lot of work, you don't have to the form and do calculation. Okay, calculation, you need to, to know the 10, 15, the 20. Mm. You need to know uh, how long they work. You need to know how much they are giving, which is, which is getting the whole salary for 12 months divided by 36 months. Mm. Do this properly, compliance is there, no problem. Mm. Everything done. Okay? Alright, any question? No? In that case, if not, today session 2, module 2 is done. We'll have a short break. Oh, yeah, break, yeah, break. Five minutes. Five minutes minute break. And then we continue with our last one, the third one module we'll before we finish uh, the QA. Okay? Alright. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. Alright. I'll see you later. Four times.
Stop one, huh? five minutes only. Huh?
we have done module 1, employment act, module 2, retrenchment, and the third module, our last one, sexual harassment at the workplace. Okay, this is the last one. Code of practice, okay, please don't talk here. Whatever I'm going to share today is mostly taken from this code of practice on the prevention and eradication of sexual harassment in the workplace that was uh, released in 1999, mm. 24, 24, 25 years ago. Okay? The time the minister was, I think, I can't remember, 99, okay, very long time ago. So, Question time, okay, trivia, trivia for you. Which of the following is considered sexual harassment? Okay, you let me know. Number one, repeatedly calling a person sayang. <laughs> Number two, touching a colleague's thigh. Not, not the chicken, the fried chicken thigh, eh? colleague's thigh. Eh? Number three, asking a colleague out for lunch. One, two, eight. Give. Oh, so <laughs> Number four, give gifts to a colleague. Which one is considered sexual harassment? A is one and two. B is one, two, three. C is two only. D is none of the above. Or okay. Or E, double A. So one double A. Which one? If I don't like you, all of them. One, two, eight. <laughs> one, two, eight. Think, think, think. I give you 30 seconds. One, two. No. Never mind, wait, 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 I'll ask you later on. I'll give you 30 oh. seconds, okay? You got about 20 seconds ago. Think, 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 you can change your mind. You can change your mind? See. 15 seconds. Change your mind? You can change your mind. Okay. Call the person who's hiring. See. See. Okay, time's up. A, hands up. 1 and 2. Sayan tak boleh, touch tak boleh. Out for lunch, give gifts, okay. Or you also. Okay, one, two, three, B. Siapa? No one. C. Only touch a colleague's thigh, tak boleh. Semua boleh. Okay. Uh, but colleague, consider female to female or female to... I didn't say, uh, <laughs> I just say colleague only, ma. Okay, D. That one is confusing, I'm thinking. <laughs> D. D. Okay, wait, 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 wait. D. None of the above. Semua boleh. Alam. Or E. Semua tak boleh. Alam. E. Oh. Okay. No. Okay. Anyone you did not know none of the, none of it is your answer. Anyone. Besides A. Okay. If I ask you, you think A, B, C, D, E all wrong? You have your own answer, which is. What is the answer? Uh, e. e, all of the above. Because uh, if a colleague say out for lunch, but if he got any other major, I mean, mm. okay. if all together say yes, yes. I mean, you and me, uh, you and me, you can ask me to lunch by one only at time. La. If all are okay, just that they mentioned maybe. Ah, then I think uh, I didn't give. Uh, if also, I didn't give a lot of information, lah. Mm. Okay, mm. when I call you, say ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. also. Yeah. It can be, it can be two of us, say ah. It can be two of them, say ah. Or it can be, it can be like me, me and Lisa. It can be me and Lisa. It can be you and Chanel. I, I didn't say Lisa. Lisa. Okay. okay. What is the answer then? Anybody, anybody want to say before I tell you the answer? C of the above. No. 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 A, A. 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 Can be okay. can be D. The answer is what? Can be D, can be D. <laughs> uh, the answer is, she's actually correct. There's no clear answer. It can be none of the above or all of the above. Repeatedly calling the person sign can be sexual harassment. 
if I don't like it, you do it anyway. If I'm okay with it, then it's fine. Touching the bird, because this time I know how. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it can be. It can be. John Tor. Maybe two of them, they are like two. They are okay. To them, it's okay. Maybe they are open minded, they are okay. It's not. It's not. If it's, you don't like it, then it is. If I keep asking you for lunch, every day ask you for lunch, you're not happy. <laughs> then it is. <laughs> then it is. You say I'm full already. <laughs> but if I keep, if I ask her, she likes it, it is not. Give gifts to a colleague can can be if you like it, okay. Yes. If I only give you gift every day, I give you gift. You don't like it? It's not. It is it is also a, it is a sexual okay. Okay. The key thing is <laughs> let's go the only the only way to understand what is sexual harassment and what is not is to understand what the definition is. According to the Code of Practice on the Prevention and Eradication of Sexual Harassment in the Workplace, very mouthful. Any, what's the keyword here? Unwanted. unwanted conduct of sexual nature. Unwanted. Tak suka. Kalau saya suka, any unwanted conduct of sexual nature that might on reasonable grounds be perceived by the recipient as placing a condition of a sexual nature on her or his employment. In short, coercion. I put pressure on you because I am your boss. You must entertain me in a sense. Coercion, coerce, I force you. That's one. Second one, that might on reasonable grounds be perceived by the recipient as an offence or humiliation or a threat to his or her well-being but has no direct link to his or her employment. Example, like, line clear, line hall. Not, not related, no. This is not coercion. This is annoyance. Kancang. I disturb you. Well, I'm annoying you. you. Get irritated by me. That is also sexual harassment. That is from the code of practice. In the Anti-Sexual Harassment Act 2022, yang baru diwatarkan tahun ini, any unwanted again the keyword here, unwanted code conduct of sexual nature in any form, whether verbal or the longer lah, verbal, non-verbal, visual, gestural, or physical directed at a person which is reasonably offensive or humiliating or is a threat to his well-being annoyance because you, you understand this thing huh? why why this one doesn't have anything with coercion because this anti-sexual harassment act is for everyone general public it's not work related it can be anything it can be someone you meet at a club at the gym it can be even your friend, eventually, that you don't want to be friend anymore. Your ex-boyfriend, ex-husband, ex-girlfriend, ex-wife. Can also. Because right, it's, it's very general. So it becomes annoyance. It's not coercion. Coercion means if you don't do this, you don't comply, you may have problem continuing to work here. You have no choice but to entertain in that sense. So there are two different things. So at workplace, you have two things. Coercion and Annoyance. But for anti-sexual harassment act, it's only annoyance. Okay? Are you with me? So anti-sexual harassment talk about all this. Code of practice also got. There are a few things. The first one is verbal, of course. Verbal is very straightforward. Lah. Verbal sexual harassment. Um, constantly using four letter words is also considered uh, Right? Or I come and talk to you and uh, talk, talk dirty to you, dirty jokes, right? It's also sexual harassment. Okay? Not verbal. Your finger, your mouth, example, lah, huh? everything. 
gesture of body language, not verbal. Visual, something, cut, papan, hanta kamma, tunjuk. Okay, visual, hanta video. Okay, example. Uh, be careful what you do, huh? <laughs> okay. uh, physical, straightforward lah. Sentuhan, straightforward. Jangan jangan dia. Psychological, apa dia? Example, asking for lunch, giving gifts, that's psychological. I'm trying to, I mean, you want to woo someone, you want to woo, pick up, lelaki ke, perempuan, okay. But, it becomes annoyance. Memang lah, you, you suka orang tu, orang tak suka you. Kenapa orang macam tu, it becomes harassment. That's what it says. Okay? And remember what the keyword is for sexual harassment? Un Unwanted. So, it means all these things only if it's unwanted. If I suka, you suka, it's not sexual harassment. Okay? You cannot today, you start suka, you become sexual harassment. Tomorrow you're happy already, you become no sexual harassment. You cannot. It cannot be like that. It has to be constant. You may, you may, you may like it now, but you can change your mind, of course. But you cannot keep changing it. You know? So you have to be careful um, as a person, not as a recipient. You whatever you do to someone, if that person likes it now, doesn't mean that person will like it tomorrow or next week or next month. So you have to be careful. If you call Saya, everybody say I'm fine. But if one person doesn't like it, you should stop. You should stop. Alright? But if they like it, okay. Lah. You see, when we talk about sexual harassment or everything, it's usually the recipient. We talk about the recipient. The recipient means sesiapa yang kena. Right? Not sesiapa yang tengok, nampak. Right? It's always recipient. It's always about recipient. So, if, let's say, I am Shahir, saya, 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 saya. If we are both happy, yeah, if you're not happy, you see you tak suka, it's not sexual harassment. Okay? You cannot say that, hey, I miss sexual harassment, I miss sexually harassed. Who? Elvin, mana kena buat? Oh, he keep calling Shahir, sayang. That's the word Elvin. Okay? That is another issue. That is a separate issue. Okay? At most, at most I can think from a HR perspective is, you say that it's, it's not appropriate in the workplace. It's it's very funny. You can make an issue out of it. You can, but it is not sexual harassment. Okay, it has to be respected. Okay, tapi kalau kalau lah, mangsa tu memang syahir yang kena. You saw it. You want to witness. That's that's okay. That's can. But it has to be the recipient who feels it. And if nampak a uh, recipient kena macam tak berapa suka, but takut. Nah, cakap, you can approach the person and ask. That is okay. To find out, are you okay? You think that he, you feel that she's being, you know, too much. Then, then if she say yes or the person, or saya say yes to that, then I tak suka dia panggil saya sayang. Ini saja, no, ini boleh panggil bukan saya. No, so you can, you can make it an issue as a sexual harassment case. Only that. So third party is just two different, two different uh, scenario. Uh, if there is a Affair lah between two colleagues. Also, it's not, it's not sexual harassment. Okay, it's another thing. Separate issues. Okay, so where can it occur? Bila? If you look at this here, work-related social function. Okay, uh, you go for uh, makan makan. Cost of work assignment outside workplace. You travel to Kelantan to Gajepa to check the hub there. Or conference things like that, like during last time, during our break, something happened, you know? During work, we later travel in the car, you know, on the train, on the bus, over the phone. Verbal, right? Through electronic media. Email? What's that? Picture, video. So, if you look at it, it can occur anywhere. Anywhere. Don't just limit to 
physical. Ten years ago, maybe lah, physical lah, you know. Ten twenty years ago, but now cannot really. Now anywhere also cannot. Facebook, WhatsApp, TikTok, Instagram, the more lah. What else? Yeah, baru baru punya thread. Same thing. So it can happen anywhere and everywhere. So which is why it is very important for a company to know what to do. And the first message to everybody is always zero zero tolerance on sexual harassment. This is a poster that uh, sorry, this is a poster that we did. Um, I think Lightning Talk is doing using it. Also. Hey, I, uh, I think it's like different. I'm not sure if you do something different, but I, sh- I shared the choice earlier lah. Okay. You can see uh, we sent to the hub and the branches to show. Actually, direct we supposed to put it here, but I didn't really see. <laughs> so supposed to put it. So. We have to figure out, put a place, like pantry, every floor, put one, just to show that the company is doing that. Because the act says you must actively promote zero tolerance on sexual harassment. Yeah. Um, I'm, I guess the unfortunate thing in a way is that it has not been strictly enforced. Like you don't see the banana and the jet going by, but they are not in the free or so. Yeah, you must see that one. So because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law even more than guys. Because we hear this law you bring up a good 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 point. You bring up a good point about lucky saja. You see you see the definition. Look at that recipient. Did he say male or female? No. Sexual harassment doesn't happen only to female. It can happen to male. It can be female to female. Female to male, male to female, mm. or male to male. Mm. It's always possible. Of course, the highest one will be male to female. Mm. Highest, of course, definitely you know it. And that is why you have to be careful what you do. Awareness for the if you're in HR, you need to be aware of all these things. You need to make sure that your team, your company is aware of this. That things like this is not acceptable. So promote is one thing. How do you address it if things like this happen? Okay. So that's what we are sharing now. This is a standard report system. If you look at the poster just now, email to Janice or me. There are two ways you can com- complain, either by email or to HR by face to face lah. Normally, it's not a very nice thing to share. So most people may not come face to face and tell you. So it could be me. So that's why you do that. You allow that. If you are a victim, you should email and tell us. But if you are a victim but you are afraid to share, you may need a friend to help you. So you need to be aware. So people like us in HR, you need to be alert on all those things. You hear or see things that sometimes go a bit overboard. To be aware and ask, are you okay? Things like that, you know. Um, um, in my previous company, there was there was a f- account exec who mentioned to me that she felt uncomfortable in a meeting because the boss always says follow the word, mm. and then talk talk the deep in a way like a very bad way like example lah, ma lah, say people fight about lah, things like that, no things like that, and she felt she felt that senang senang lah. So they are comfortable. So that can be sexual harassment as well, even though it's not directly. But the way you say it, she cannot. Recipient, it's not about the person who speaks it. The person who receive it. If you're there, you're the recipient. Really. You know, so you have to be careful. So back to this. If you know of someone being harassed, email, send to your or for like how many you know that's okay lah. But this is what we're doing lah. So once we receive the information, 
we will launch a, a investigation. We will appoint an investigation officer. Okay. Okay. So investigation officer job is to investigate and find out what happened. Okay. So it's like it's like police uh, I own uh, I own. Uh, so I if I say I am the investigation officer, uh, whoever let's say Shahil is complaining, uh, I can ask Shahil, tell me the details, tell me the story, what happened, blah 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 blah. Do you have any witness example? Okay? Then I go and investigate some people, talk now. Also, during investigation, the offender should be suspended for time being or ask to go on this. Say, let's say I am investigating a uh, shy complaint about uh, okay, let's say I have a Cheryl. So, Cheryl, I will set up Cheryl to go on this. Because it's not proven, it's not proven, it's alleged. Alleged in here. So, for a company to tell the person to take leave, I think it's safe so that we can continue investigation. But I can I can suspend you with um, with pay. Alright, because I haven't proven anything. But of course, if I prove everything, I punish you with half pay, la, whatever. La. Okay? So, suspension on the offender, we go and investigate. Submission of investigation report to senior management. So, let's say if I am investigating, I got everything in report already, I'll submit to senior management. Um, my, my decision is I, I, we will not disclose the identity of the recipient, the whoever called so I will not go and tell, for example, Jeff, okay, we have a report, we have complained uh, by someone about uh, Cheryl. Okay, about Cheryl. Huh? So after investigation, this is the story, this is the fact, everything, blah, blah. Jeff asked him, who was the person who complained? Oh, sorry, I cannot tell you. It's PNC. Unless it is a need for Jeff to know, I will talk to uh, Shai, Shai, uh, boss, uh, I will tell her, okay. Then if you say can, I will tell. If you say cannot, I will say cannot. Unless unless again it becomes too serious that it involves big 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 people lah. Mean like very damage, normal stuff, tapper lah. But let's say it involves a big person like for example, can he can he arrest Shahe CFO? You no, know, that's very big really. So maybe I will I will uh, break that, that 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 secrecy and I'll tell I'll tell Jeff. I will look at my you know, my discretion lah. So, this is the, the scenario. Submission and investigation of report. And usually, if, if, if it's a male who report, it has to be investigated by a male. If it's a female who report, investigation by a female. That's why we have Chinese and me. And if we're not free, we may even appoint people, other people to investigate. Okay. And once investigation is done, of course, outcome. Usually, there are four possibilities. Why no action? Tipu. Could be Tipu. Mm. Could be Shahe Tasuka Cheryl. Cheryl did something to you, you got offended. You said it happened again. Mm. Possible. Okay? Or, mungkin ada tapi tak ada bukti. Mm. 